All right. As you can see, I haven't lost this accent yet. Uh, and it's not just about the Barney or lack of it. Uh, there's a reason. And I felt the need to explain things. And also, where there was a two-week gap between my last two clips on the YouTube thing. Yeah, I had to get in character for my last role, being a professional and all that. So, in order to get into that character, I had to go proper method with my acting, which, as you can see, got me to such a level that I am on par with the great Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins. Now, if you don't want any Barney, I suggest that you open your minces. You have a butcher's at this. And I don't want any pony that you ain't seen it. Roll pictures. So he has a word of an old mate of mine from way back. Half the ticket, Terry from Tottenham. Now Terry's a few sandwiches short of a picnic. The lights are on, but no one's home. You know the sort. And they're low wattage energy saving bulbs at that. But I say, tell, can you hook me up with Mr. Big? You've done a bit of bird, ain't ya? He says, yeah. I say, no, tell, not that sort of Mr. Big, you muppet. I'm at the kingpin, the lord of the manor from old London town. And then half the ticket, Terry comes through and introduces me to Rupert, the head honcho. Honourable hoodlum and criminal mastermind of the underworld. I mean... The bloke even drives a Ford Fusion, for God's sakes. And then I meet baseball bat Barry, and fees move really fast. I'm part of a gang already, and then got introduced to his mate, Machete Mike. Now, I'm not allowed to have a gangster name, because I've got to do six months probation, which I was pretty gutted about, to be honest with you, because I thought I was looking in the part, proper rough and ready, like, first week comes along, and we're doing a couple of post office, me and my two chums, yeah, I even get to swindle an old pensioner out of her pension and her life savings. I get to sell some drugs to some kids in the park. I go down to the beach and get onto the harder stuff with them. Yeah, yours truly are my two new mates, Baseball Bat Barry and Machete Mike. We're really doing some now. Second week comes, we do a bank. Uh, I do so well they let me do another bank. Now I'm not allowed to drive the getaway car, because apparently... In your probation, the insurers just don't cover it. But fair play to them. They let me hold the sawn off shotgun when we do the second bank. And then they even let me chain up a criminal bloody rival, don't they? I get to carry him down the end of the pier and everything. That's when I meet him. Harry the Bastard. Oh, nasty piece of work. He deals in the import of illegal immigrants. He's pretty good at it as well, I can tell you. Now... I don't think Harry is his proper name. He's a proper bastard, though. It was proper hard work, I can tell you. I mean, I only done two weeks, but it was proper scary as well. But the good thing is, you got to have your cake, and you also got to eat your cake. It was lovely. It was full of lots of wine, and then lots of women. And what comes with wine and women? Yeah, a bit of song. We had some of that as well, didn't we? And then Rupert. Proper disappoints me. He gets me to do something that I'm ashamed of. With the help of his little sister, a pretty little thing who's working on the tills in Asda, he gets me to buy a trolley full of flipping toilet rolls. Yeah, I swindled a pension out of her life savings. Yeah, I sold some drugs to some kids. I robbed a couple of banks, so what? And I was accomplice to murder. But there's no way I'm going down for buying toilet roll in this day and age. It was Rupert's pretty little sister that grasped him up in the end. And he deserved it. He's gone into hiding now. And nobody knows where he is. And as for the others. Well, me and baseball bat Barry and our friends on Facebook. And Machete Mike is doing an Elton John tribute act. He sometimes sends me funny clips on WhatsApp and things like that. And as for Harry the Bastard, well, he got caught taking money for 300 people from Taiwan. Yeah, he got proper shafted. He's doing 16 hours community service now. And my old mate Arthur Ticket Terry from Tottenham's doing a six stretch. 
Yeah, for hoarding tins of baked beans in his spare room. He's going to be 60 by the time he comes out. Poor bugger. And there you have it. All the events that led to me wearing my head upside down and talking in a strange voice. So after two weeks of being part of a criminal gang, I've got an accent I can't shift. I'm bobbing my head like a bloody pigeon every time I talk. And every time I walk down the street, I start swaggering. And I jump up in the air and click my heels together like some proper cockney geezer now. I don't know what's going on. Now, I'm proper ashamed of the toilet roll stuff. Now, I I'm asking for forgiveness for that, but nothing else. Now, in order for me to try and get back on the mend, I'm doing the only thing I can. I'm having a bit of online counselling, taking medication, but apparently, to lose that kind of extreme accent that you get from joining a gang, you have to put yourself in isolation. So as you can see, I'm no longer on my wobbly table. With a big clock behind me. Now, I'm in my bedroom, ain't I? Trying to shift it. So, wish me all the best. And I'll see you next time. Ta-da!